You can find the biggest bug in the world, a bug that rips a company open and still get a rejected report. Why? Because the report sucks. You did the hard work, you found it, but you didn't sell it. Triagers don't read novels, they scan, they triage, they decide in seconds. Bug bounty is not only technical, it's sales. Your report is the bitch. If it's messy, vague, or missing the one thing that a triager needs, it dies. A good report get accepted fast, it gets triaged faster, it gets paid. A bad report, marked as NA, duplicate, informative, or not a security issue. Today, I will teach you how to write reports that don't get ignored. Structure, clarity, proof, the exact pieces triagers want. Not theory, no fluff, real, usable format, that gets resolved. By the end of this video, you will know how to produce a report a triager can reproduce in minutes and can't refuse to escalate. So, this is Emersec, go get your coffee ready, and let's dive in. The channel has enough Before we jump into the structure, I want to share something quickly because it genuinely made a difference for me recently. I've been testing a lot of XSS Surface the past few weeks and I tried a tool called XSS Zor. And honestly, it saved me time in crazy way. It takes my URL list, filter everything, finds the parameters that actually matter and start testing reflected, stored, and blind XSS on its own. And the part that surprised me is the workflow. I just run it, leave it, and when something hits, I get notification, I come back, check the results, validate it, and move on. No babysitting, no repeating the same builds manually. It also has a recon mode that both subdomains extract URLs, filter them, and start hunting straight away. That part alone is a lifesaver because it removes all the early noise and puts me straight into the real testing. So if you want to try it, you can use the code Emersec for $15 off on all XOR plans only for Emerson community. That is just something I wanted to share from my experience because it's actually helping me to hunt faster. All right, back to the video. Now let me explain why report structure is so important. When a triager opens your report, they are probably looking at hundreds of submissions that day. They don't have time to dig through a wall of tickets to trying to figure out what you are talking about. They need to understand three things immediately. First, what is the vulnerability? Second, why does it matter? Third, can I reproduce it right now? If your report does not answer these questions quickly and clearly, it's getting scared that the user moves on to the next one. But if your report is clean, structured, and easy to follow, you stand out, you'll make their job easier. And when you make their job easier, they more likely to accept your report, escalate it, and reward you properly. So structure is not about looking professional, it's about getting paid. Now, let me show you exactly how to structure a perfect but bounty report. All right, so basically when I start writing the report, first thing I do is opening my Visual Studio code because here where I write my report and I just create a new file .md and I will let you know why. And once I just create it, I just close this out. And after this, I will have here another icon and this previews the file real time. I'm not really sure if this requires an extension or not, but I don't think so. So that's actually it right here. Here I have my file reboot.md ready and I have the preview. Let me zoom for you a little bit. So the first thing I start with is title. So this is your title. One line, it needs to do two things. Tell them what the bug is and why it matters. A bad title will be something like IDOR bug found and a good title will be something like IDOR in Billing API allows viewing other users' invoices. See the difference? The bad title is vague. The good title tells you exactly what the vulnerability is, where it exists, and what the impact is. The triager reads your title and immediately knows if this is critical, high, medium, or low severity. Here, second thing we have is summary. And this is your summary. Two to three sentences. You are giving quick context. What is the bug? I door in billing API. Where does it exist? 
the slash API slash billing slash invoice endpoint. And what does it lead to? Unauthenticated access to other users billing data. Keep it conscious, do not explain every detail yet. That's coming next. Just give them enough to understand what they are about to read. The next thing we have is description. And here we explain everything. This is where you explain how the vulnerability works, what causes it, why it is a problem. You are not just saying there is an IDOR. You are explaining the technical details. The endpoint does not validate authorization. It accepts a parameter without checking ownership. It exposes BIR. This section shows you understand the bug, not just that you found it. And after the description, the next part, of course, is the STR the steps to reproduce, okay? This is the most important section of your entire report. This is where the triager tries to reproduce your bug. If your steps are unclear, incomplete, or wrong, they won't be able to reproduce it. And if they can't reproduce it, your report gets closed. So make your steps clear, so you have to use simple language, and do not assume they know what you are doing and you have to make it numbered step by step in order and also detailed so include urls actions parameters everything and of course reproducible someone with zero context should be able to follow these and see the bug and notice i included right here expected versus observed behavior at the end observe account a receives data it shouldn't this makes it crystal clear what the bug is. The next section we have is BOC or proof of concept. All right, your proof of concept is the evidence. This is what proves the bug is real. Include full HTTP requests and responses. Show the actual data being sent and received. Screenshots, visual proof of the vulnerability in action. GIFs or short videos, sometimes a 10 second screen recording is more powerful than paragraph of text. So the more evidence you provide, the easier it is for the triager to validate your report. So the last section we have here, it's actually not the last one, but we can consider it as last one, okay? The last section we have here is impact. This is where you explain why all of this matters. What can an attacker actually do with this bug? Do not just say it's bad. Paint a picture. Show the real world consequences. Can they steal data? What kind? Can they take over an account? How? Can they disrupt service? In what way? And if you can, include a CVSS score. This is a standardized way to measure vulnerability severity. Not every program requires it, but it shows you understand impact assessment. The impact section is what convinces the program owner to prioritize fixing your bug. So actually here we have a one last section, but it's actually optional. So you can just add it or not. And of course it is remediation. So this section is actually, as I said, optional, but it is powerful. By providing remediation steps, you are showing that you are not only just a bug hunter, you are a security professional who wants to help them fix the issue. You don't have to write code, you can just uh, suggest, okay? Implement authorization checks before returning data. Use UUIDs instead of sequential IDs. Address limiting to prevent abuse. Simple, actionable fixes that makes developers' job easier and builds trust with the program. Now, if I scroll all the way up, you will see that we have a beautiful report. We have the title, summary, description, steps to produce, proof of concept, impact, and remediation. And the only reason I have used Visual Studio Code because, as I said, if it's just rendering everything I write, so if I see any mistakes, anything I can just edit immediately. So this actually makes it easier for me. So here you have your full report, clean, structured, easy to follow. Every section has a purpose and together they tell a complete story. This is what a perfect bug bounty report looks like. But here is some common mistakes you have to avoid. One, vague titles, don't do it. Two, missing steps, do not assume. 
ever. Three, no BUC, no pictures or it didn't actually happen. Four, overstating impact. Be honest, credibility matters. And also do not submit out of scope, read the program rules. Also avoid using walls of text, use headings, uh, bullets, code blocks in instead. Fix these and you are already ahead of the most submissions. All right, now that you know the structure, let me give you some pro tips that will take your report to the next level. Tip one, avoid using AI. I know it's tempting to use ChatGPT to write your report, but here is the problem. Triagers can tell. AI generated reports are often wordy, generic, and lack the specific technical details that matter. Use AI to help structure your thoughts or check grammar, sure, but don't let it write your entire report. Your report should sound like you, not like a corporate security memo. Tip 2 Be full proof, not fancy. You don't need to impress anyone with complex technical jargon. Your goal is clarity. Write your steps as if you are explaining to someone who's never used the application before. Include every detail. Assume nothing. A report that's easy to follow gets accepted. A report that requires a detective work to understand gets closed. Tip 3. Use visuals heavily. Screenshots, GIFs, and videos are your best friends. A triager can read your steps, but if they see a 10 second video of you exploiting the bug, there is zero ambiguity. They know it's real. Record your screen, animate your screenshots, highlight the important parts, make it impossible to miss. Tip 4 Focus on impact. If you are stuck between two bugs and you are not sure which one to submit first, always prioritize the one with higher impact. A B1, a B2 bug with well written report get accepted and rewarded faster than a B4 bug, even if the B4 bug report is technically perfect. Impact matters, always led with your strongest findings. Step 5 Test your own steps. Before you hit submit, follow your own reproduction steps. Can you reproduce the bug using only what you wrote? If you can't, the triager definitely can't. Revise your steps until they are bulletproof. Tip 6. One bug, one report. Don't stuff multiple vulnerabilities into one report. Each bug deserves its own submission. Why? Because if you submit three bugs in one report and one of them is invalid, the whole report might get marked as not applicable. Keep them separate. Tip 7. Communicate, don't arg. If your report gets closed and you disagree, respond professionally. Provide additional evidence, clarify misunderstanding, but don't arg. Triagers are human, they make mistakes, but being rude or aggressive will get you ignored or even banned. Stay professional, stay helpful, and you will build a reputation that gets your future reports prioritized. Alrighty. So let's bring this all together. A strong bug bounty report is clear, structured, and foolproof. It follows the format that I just covered. Every great report follows this structure. And when you follow the structure, your reports get accepted faster, rewarded higher, and build your reputation as a professional researcher. Remember, bug bounty is not just about finding bugs, it's about communicating them. Your report is your bitch. Make it count. So that's how you write a perfect bug bounty report. If you want to see an example of real high quality report, I have included a link in the description to a great submission. Study it, learn from it, and use it as reference. And if you found this video helpful, do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more cybersecurity content. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below, or you can reach me directly on Twitter. Until next time, stay curious and stay secure.